Hello and welcome to another one of our videos. This time we're talking about hypermobility and joint pain. Um, it's quite a different topic to what we've normally discussed but uh, something that I'm coming across more and more regularly um, throughout our practice with uh, rehabilitation and uh, many tricky joint injuries. I'm seeing um, people quite often that have had pain and seen been in therapy and or done many different things first before they've come to see me and in more cases than not um, hypermobility is a big reason as as to why their treatment has not worked so um, let's get into it um, firstly the, the, what hypermobility is it's um, basically like a joints that are got too much flexibility in them and the joint can go beyond its its optimal range um, Typically, these are people who uh, genetically may be that way. I, I, to be, for example, myself, I'm hypermobile myself, and um, I'll expand on that later. But you know, often you'll find these people will love yoga, dancing, gymnastics. They'll enjoy stretching. They'll always find time to do it, and they're actually quite good at it. Uh, it's more common in females, but um, it's not limited to. It's quite uh, actually common in a lot of elite sports professional athletes in baseball with elbows and shoulders and it's their excessive hypermobility that generates their power but it's also creates a lot of joint problems and and chronic pain it can really lead to some uh, quite disastrous things so um, so as I put here joint problems and that these two tend to break bones rather than tear muscles just not enough stability at the joint uh, they also can make things look really good uh, so they, they actually got pain doing a movement but when you see them doing it it actually looks like there's nothing wrong with it this is why it's also these people are, are very difficult to uh, assess I suppose because there's so much uh, so many things masking what's really going on underneath uh, they're also very difficult to strengthen due to the lack of stability and even when you have the right exercise everything's doing it wrong and you create more stiffness and pain areas that shouldn't be doing it um, yeah, a very tricky case, but like I said, I'm seeing this very, very uh, more regularly, more than ever. I don't know why, but it's just seeing a lot of them. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, traditional treatments fail for, for this type of person, and I'll expand on the reasons why. Um, so the reasons though that the, these treatments usually fail is because most of them are trying to release tight muscles, and they're trying to release trigger points and uh, working on and treating the area that's in pain for a start um, and hardly ever is the area in pain the reason the, the real problem it's just where the where everything has ended up but it's it's actually being driven from something somewhere else um, with people with tight muscles um, the traditional treatments are quite quite good because they'll loosen up the, these things and there there is a quite good stability there but there's a, a tightness there's a lack of uh, optimal length tension relationship with the muscles and the joint can't move properly but with these people the joint is actually it's not that it's not moving enough it's actually moving too much so the body is sensing its instability now it creates a stiffening process to protect the joint um, so so trying to loosen someone who's already too loose uh, is a disaster so like I've put here, it's great for the flexibility and pro problem, but it's not good for too much flexibility. So mass massage for someone hypermobile is just going to really loosen things off and foam rolling. Uh, while they even they might actually feel like it's good, it's actually not really the the solution to them. They might take away some of their pain temporarily, but long term, it's going to make it worse. Um, uh, to give you an example of some stuff that we would find in some of the common injuries. Uh, piriformis syndrome is a real big one with this. I find that this particular problem usually is more often related to instability than anything to do with tight muscles. It's the instability that's driving the problem um, and, and it can only be solved by using exercises to strengthen and stabilize. Re using massage, trigger point release, stretching uh, is really pointless. Uh, without getting into the uh, the instability of where, where it really lies. So I've, I've put here, uh, so unstable pelvis and lumbar spine with stiff hips and weak glutes. Um, so the weak glutes probably falling more in the unstable area, which is a big reason as to why 
the piriformis is going to drive in and, and, and try to create this, the stiffness that the glutes are not doing. Um, knee pain, so an unstable knee due to stiffness at the hips and the ankles. Um, the stiffness you know, maybe from an unstable hips, unstable ankles and now there's a stiffness there and now it's going to drive instability into the joint below or above. Um, back pain, unstable lower back, uh, lumbar spine, so your stabilizers around the lower spine and the pelvis again not working as in knee pain and piriformis. Now the hips are going to have to be created to be stiff to protect the joint from um, dislocation and, and worse problems. So, so the lumbar spine is compromised uh, to make the hips more stable, the joint more stable. Um, the neck pain, so an unstable shoulder uh, or, or neck um, creates a stiff thoracic spine which could be driven from the unstable um, abdominal area. So you can see what I mean, like there's so many different things, one thing leads to the next, but make no mistake, you know, um, the person who's hypermobile at almost every joint, there's going to be stiffness driven in, in areas where it's going to be needed in particular movements. So, it, and you'll see that it will disappear when they lie down and it reappears when they move. This is why it's very difficult to assess and find out what's going on because one minute it looks fine and the next minute it doesn't. So um, you have to really have a careful eye of what you're looking for, you know, experience and uh, seeing it before definitely helps and having a roadmap on what, what, what to look for and how to, how to go about it is really handy, which I'll give you an idea in a second. Um, uh, this is depending on the piriformis one because uh, I get so many questions about this every day. Um, you know, again, that the instability is driving the problem, and the traditional treatments are often making things worse because they're trying to release the only thing that's holding it together, which is the small piriformis muscle. So that muscle's never going to stop working, it's just going to tighten up, tighten up, and get inflamed and get bigger and bigger and start touching the sciatic nerve. And it will never stop doing it until you address the instability of the of the um, pelvis and the, the femur within, the, within that complex there, which is really going to be driven by glutes. Uh, and it's going to be driven by an instability on a single leg stance. So those two things are really where you, you, you're going to have to work big time, but it's not as easy as just doing it straight away because there's too much pain present. You have to have a, a, a gradual process of getting there. So. Uh, but that's a classic example of where instability is the big problem. That's why so many people really struggle to get on top of this, this injury and it, and it just gets worse and worse the longer they spend more time with traditional treatments and trigger point release but not addressing the real cause of instability. Um, so we've touched on this already but what are these people lacking? Well they're lacking a lot of st stability. So their extra mobility which is great for getting in uh, you know some pretty good positions although this is not this is even though this looks impressive it's too much flexibility is equally as bad as not enough so uh, this while it looks good and you know as long as this girl is has good some some you know working on her stability in other areas she might be fine with that but generally speaking that, that is not a good thing and you'll see a lot of gymnasts and that in later in life have all types of spinal problems I've worked with so many yoga people so many dancers that used to do all this stuff and now have all types of spinal and neck problems. So uh, once they've they've uh, got a bit older, so um, so stretching the excessive mobility exposes joints to potential hyperextension and in some cases dislocation, which is a very bad injury. So stretching creates trigger points and stiffness to protect the joints. So the trigger points, like a little black hole, tries to pull all the, everything back together to prevent the hyperextension and dislocation. And stiffness will will occur in certain muscles to, again to do the same thing. Um, usually like joints like elbow and knee you'll find it happens, this sort of stuff can happen quite uh, early on. Um, if you don't address the problems elsewhere then later on things start to appear in the, appear in the spine, um, shoulder, some of them shoulder early on and, and, and also the hip, you know, so and like I said before very difficult to find the problem and it's very difficult to strengthen. Um, a good little test to see if you are hypermobile is uh, the Baton test or the nine point test. And basically, you just use uh, you, you go through it both hands and both arms on this. So, the first one you try to bend back your pinky finger. So, if it gets past 90 degrees, you get a point. So, if you can do it on both hands, you get two points. Uh, if you can bend your thumb back to touch your wrist, then you get a point for each hand. So, you'd be on four. If your elbows hyperextend, you get a point for each arm. So, you'd be on six. 
if your knees can hyperextend, you get a point for each leg, so you get, you'll be on point of eight. And if you can touch the floor with your palms flat on the ground, your knees straight, and you're, that means you're hyperextending your lower back, and you get another point and you get nine. So in the case of myself, I'm a, I'm a six, probably borderline a seven on my left knee. It tends to hyperextend at times uh, due to problems. So I know I've had many joint problems, many broken bones. I've also torn muscles, but I've had more broken bones and joint problems than torn muscles. So uh, if I was to pick what I'd have, I'd rather tear a muscle. So, so in my case, I need to spend a lot of time uh, trying to stabilize and strengthen, and I've always found it difficult to, to get strong um, compared to other people who do the same, same as me, but tend to be able to do it a lot easier. Um, all right, so that's an example. So that's a simple test you can use to see if you are hypermobile or not. Um, stiffness and stability are different, right? So stiffness is body's like it's really its plan B attempt to try and do to restore the, the lack of stability. And, and instead of using the small stabilizer muscles that aren't actually big enough to create movement, all they're there for is to make sure the joints are in the right place. Uh, and if they're lazy or they're disabled or the timing is wrong, then you're going to use your prime mover muscles. The prime mover muscles are your big muscles that are obviously meant to move you. So they are now being compromised if of their movement in order to create stability at the joint. Um, it's, the body will say, I'd rather st be stiff and stable than unstable and be able to do that movement, probably uh, risk severe injury. So um, so this is where you, your movements are really compromised in a big way. Um, so your true stability is when the stabilizers work on a reflex level um, and they, they come in and they work really, really quickly. You don't even sort of know them, but they're, they're doing the job as they're meant to. Um, uh, this is again, again with these people we'll only sort of see these problems when they stand up when they try to move uh, a minute they lie down and you and you assess them for us because of what looks like when they're moving is a stiff muscle so you go to stretch it on the floor you'll find it's not stiff at all so the minute they go back up to standing and try and squat again it's looks stiff again so but it's not a, it's not a muscle length problem that needs a stretching it needs a, a really good, uh, clever way of like educating the body how to move and create stability in the, in the correct order so the stiffness will disappear. Um, so to, to help explain this better, I'll give you an example of a squat. So let's have a look at the two squats below. So here's Nathan, one of our trainers, demonstrating a good, a good squat where he's got perfect angle of, the, of his tibia and his spine together and the, these two lines are parallel and you see his neck's in a quite neutral position, looks straight ahead, no problem. All right, so those, the, that's where, that's a beautiful squat. All right, so where this girl here, this is a common squat we would normally see, uh, where she can't get any lower than, if she kept going lower, her head would end up over here, which would look more like a deadlift. And the reason is that she'll have stiffness in the ankle or stiffness in the hip or stiffness in both. Um, usually because of, there's an instability somewhere, it could be at the feet, could be through the hips, she can't control, um, she has not enough glute strength to control it or the abdominal. So, it could be, a, can you see what I mean? There's a lot of things that could be preventing and creating the stiffness. But we see this squat every day. I see this probably nine out of 10 people would use that sort of squat method. Um, and yet when we go to look at their flexibility, we can't find anything to stretch. That when they're squatting, they're stiff as a board where Nathan's not stiff as a board. So you can see what I mean? Like this is a, a typical sign of instability and you need to be use clever ways of teaching this person how to squat with good form, overcoming this ankle mobility and hip mobility problems to learn how to do it correctly. Um, so yeah, so lying on the floor, no flexibility, standing up will only will be the only way you'll show, be able to show what, where, it, where the real problems are. Um, yeah, and the only way to change this is uh, to do it within the movement. That's why you have to use maybe heel plates um, and different creative ways. And, and there's plenty of videos on our YouTube channel where we show you how to do that. Um, another example would be, uh, say, where we see this posture. Um, and most people would start trying to stretch pecs and stuff like that. But this often with a hypermobile person will find there's nothing to stretch. It's actually quite flexible when they're lying down. When they're in a relaxed position, that's all good. <laughs> but when you look at them, it's not all good. Um, again, it's the stiffness in the, in, that's created from instability uh, that's driving all of the problems. So uh, in this case, for a hypermobile person, the lack of stability in, in through the abdominal 
and through the, the shoulder girdle and lower traps and all these different muscles that are not combining to create that perfect position are now creating stiffness. So you can stretch these tight areas, levatus scap and all that as much as you want, but if you don't come in and create the stability for the, and the strength of where they're lacking it, you'll never do anything. It will never change a thing. All right, so, um, so, right, so we know we not must strengthen, but now this is where a lot of people go, oh great, I'll start stringing, I'll go sit on a machine. Well, that's, a machine is a bad thing, it's a disaster, because you're not gonna train stabilizers on there. You're gonna train, you make matters worse, you're gonna create muscles without need for stability. Um, Pilates, like I don't, some Pilates is okay, um, but for the person that's hypermobile, it's not, and again, it's lying down. And notice, sitting down, sitting down, lying down. Now remember I told you, you'll only find these problems standing up, standing up, standing up. All right, stability, stability. Uh, this needs a lot of pelvic stability to create the stiffness in a good way, so you don't buckle your back. All right, so these are exercises where you would train um, to get rid of the bad stiffness and create good stiffness. Um, this stuff, no. This one, this won't solve any of your problems at all and it will only make matters worse. Um, so what do you, how do you, what do you do? How do you go about it? Well, you, first you need to assess, you need to find out well, okay, where, where things are coming from, where you need to start working. Once you know where to start working, then you, then you have a plan to start stabilizing those joints first. Um, so you're not really gonna try and hammer them with huge loads. You're trying to work on good movement patterns, uh, trying to get everything to coordinate in the right timing and the right order. And then the very last thing is to strengthen it on top of that. Um, so our normal success formula would be flexibility, stability, strength, power. For this person, we eliminate this first one and start working through here. And we might use mobility drills, but arguably some of them are more stability anyway. So um, you can see this is where like a toddler sort of learns to crawl and they create stability so then they can stand up and they learn how to, to get better at moving and then they get stronger and then eventually they move really super fast. And this would be a progression of like working from the ground up. So we're sort of going lying down, kneeling, or sitting, standing, standing with reflex movement, standing in all planes of movement, and then moving really fast. All right, so that's sort of an example of how very quickly you work your way through that. But this person probably going to work more through these things, so these first three, even this Turkish get up. These are all great exercises for an unstable person. you just got to find the right one for you. Um, so programs where I give you a bit more detail because I can't this video go forever if I went through it all. Um, if there's all different ones we have. If you've got a back problem, this will be perfect for your peripheral illness syndrome. Um, it's got everything step by step. Knee problems, which we see quite often as well. And you know, and then this one, the book, little black book, has the whole kit and caboodle. We've got everything in there. So um, yeah, so if, to get more information on how to do that, go to our website. Uh, respt.com.au or um, if you live in Melbourne you can get in touch with me and you can come in and see us and we can do an assessment and see how we can help you out but um, yeah I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you on our next one